Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Keith and we're going to be talking today about multimeters and why we use them and how to use them and some of the differences between different manufacturers. So in front of us at the moment we've got two multimeters. We've got a Fluke 175 and an Xtec 505. So let's get going and look at multimeters. Well, let's have a look and see what we've got in front of us. We've got two te uh, meters. We've got a Flute 175 and what is it now? An Xtec uh, meter. So if we just turn them off like so. So let's just go through some of the, the things that we can do with all these multimeters. So we can measure voltage, that's these two here. So if I go to the, the flute meter, we've got voltage. Now, if you notice on the voltage, it's got the wavy sign. That means AC. And then we've got voltage DC. And then we've got millivolts DC. So if you have a look at the, the icons on these these here, these, this is on this meter a DC icon, and that one is an AC icon. Now, if we go to just turn that off and we go to the extra tech one, you notice there's no other voltage on the switches there, and there's a reason for that. If we look at the moment, let's just see if I make sure I get it right. Yeah, and if we look at the moment when we turn it on. Let's turn it off, turn it on, straight onto the voltage, it automatically goes to DC, which is the general rule what we tend to use it for. So if we did want to use AC on this particular meter, we press the button and you'll see just up here where it says DC, that should change to AC alternating current. Okay, so whereas on the fluke, we've got a switch here for AC and then DC on the extra tech we've just we've got on the mode button so we just press for AC on that one so if we look on the fluke at the moment it's saying DC flick it over to AC and it now says AC the one thing I always say with all multimeters watch the display and also watch your decimal point so at the moment, if you look at the flute meter, it's reading 3.1-ish millivolt AC. So if I put it on DC, at the moment it's reading 0 0.000. I'll do this one with this one. And to DC, let's see what it says. It's having a bit of a float around that one, but it's, it's reading 0, 0 point, and that's in millivolts. So I'll just turn this one off. Okay, so the main thing, always watch the decimal points. No matter what you're doing, whether you're on resistance, amperage, or voltage, keep an eye on your decimal points. So, we've got voltage. Then we've got measurement of resistance, which we use for checking circuits. So, at the moment it's showing OL, which is an open circuit. And then we've got what's called diode continuity. I'll show you these after. And diode, so the, these are actually resistant. Both of these are resistance. So whereas on this meter, if I go to resistance and I want what's called continuity, I'd have to press the button till eventually the beep icon, audible icon comes on. Okay, right. So we've got voltage, we've got resistance, so let's do it on this one, it's a bit clearer. We've got voltage, which are these three. We've got resistance, which are these two. And then we've got ampage, which is current drawn, how much power a circuit uses. Okay. So let's just recap. We've got voltage, resistance, and we've got ampage. Which of these on this particular meter we've also got frequency and temperature 
I've now got temp. You need special temperature probes in order for the temperature to work. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this one away. We're just going to use the fluke, and we're just going to get some meter probes in the fluke, and we're just going to show you the resistance settings. And then we're going to get some power supplies on after. Okay, so. Okay, so we've got our meter read that. So if I put it on resistance there, one thing you always do with a meter, test your probes. So let's see if it comes on. There you go. Got 0 0.01 ohms, which is in effect a dead shot. Now if I put it on to continuity, you can hear it beeping. Now, what you've got to be careful of on continuity, most meters only go up to 300 ohms. So if you're just looking for an open and short circuit, this particular feature is quite good. So you've got an open circuit, closed circuit. So if you're checking a fuse, you can check a fuse that way. Okay, so let's just stop for a second. We'll just pause and... Right, okay, welcome back. And now we're going to be talking about resistance now, measuring resistances, which are things like circuits, resistors, and things like that. So, in this one with the flute, we turn it on to uh, resistance. And again, one of my tricks is I've got crop clips on now, crocodile clips. Just give it that, make sure everything's okay. And uh, yep, we're okay, we're good to go. So, we've got a few resistors in front of us now as I said to you keep an eye on that decimal point because it can actually throw you off quite a lot if you don't watch what's happening so this resistor should be 330 kilo ohms that's 330,000 so if I get this and put it on so what we've got So if we look at the meter now, we've got 326.7 kilo ohms. So this is why I say always keep an eye on your decimal point. So let's give it another resistor. Now the other thing to watch as well, if I just put my fingers on there, you'll see a resistance there. Right, so, so you've got to be careful, try not to touch your probes or your crop clips because you will get a false reading because it will pick up the resistance of your body. So let's look at this resistor now. So this is a 12 ohm, sorry, 12, 12 kilo ohms, 12,000 ohms resistor. So we've got 11.99 k ohms. One more. And now going to this, if we look at that, it says one point. 2k ohms which is one of our favorite resistors that we tend to use put that on like so and so there you go okay 1.18 kilo ohms in other words a thousand right okay we're going to do check this big old thing here now going to this, it is 6 ohms. You can just see that now. So let's see how true that is. The reason why this is quite a big one, this is um, a dropper resistor, so it's quite a chunky one. Okay, let's see, now it says 6, so let's see what we've got. So it's not exactly 6, as we can see. The tolerances are a little bit low. It's actually 8.8. .8. Now, depending on the circuits, it might not matter too much. So this is a, a 50 watt, 6 ohm resistor, and these are only about a quarter watt, these small ones. Now, the only thing you have got to watch out for is your auto ranging on the meter, because if I put it on that, 
it can sometimes take a minute to settle and get a, a full reading so that it's actually got it quite quick that time so now you can tell on the bottom it says auto range now if I switch it to manual that's how fast it is it's marginally faster but when you've got a resistance value that's changing quite a lot it's sometimes better to uh, leave it on auto range okay well let's just cut for a second and have a minute and then we'll get on with voltages hi and welcome back you'll see the voltage going up now you can see it just went a little bit there about there-ish so we can do it again no it's not there now there's a reason for that i've actually got it on auto range can you see what it says range there now personally i try and keep it on manual range so if you watch the decimal point there you go it says manual range decimal point there and then one more okay the reason why I personally keep it on uh, manual range it's a bit faster at reacting so if I turn the voltage up you can see how quick it is and if I turn it right down you can see how quick it is in comparison to if I go I think turn it off turn it on put it back on to auto range now if I do that it does a little bit of a blip all meters do this and you go to the blip there that blip basically is where it thinks it's been overloaded so let's put it back if we set it for about 12 and then put it on auto range and then we move the power supply down it up or down you see it's a lot smoother at reacting now that's actually the same on resistance as well you can actually put it on manual range on resistance like I said the main reason is Put it back, sorry, boom, boom. put it back on auto and then manual. The, re the reason why you don't tend to use manual range a lot on resistances is because you, the, the ratios are quite different. You One second you could be on 3 ohms and then you might have a circuit that goes 10 ohms when it shouldn't do. Uh, sorry, 10,000 ohms uh, when, it, when it shouldn't do. So if you've got a manual range you won't pick up all that, that range. With a voltage like so i tend to put it on and then we can take it right up to 30 volts okay and then bring it right down so let's just do a, a recap on this particular meter and then i'm going to have a, a quick show you on the, on the different the different meter so we've got range there the moment we're on v volts at dc remember them two icons and it's the same on the other meter but the buttons on here instead so we've got voltage millivolts but generally we're not using millivolts resistances which are these and then ampage which is this okay so I'm just going to break for a second and I'll swap meters okay so now to, now we've got our probes in the in the same position on this one so we've got a common and then we've got our, our red which in this case we're using it as a positive and then we've got our current uh positions uh for 10 amp and milliamp so it's very similar to the fluke in a way in the probe positions okay now where this differs is things like ac and dc whereas on the fluke we've got two positions which is uh, volts dc volts ac whereas on this particular meter it's uh, on the mod button so if i flick that onto ac it will probably have what i would call a dicky fit because it's on dc i'm actually giving it a dc signal 
I'm going to put it back on to DC so you can see the icon change. So I always say just keep an eye on your display, see what you're doing and don't just uh, go in complete autopilot. Now as you can tell on the range we're in auto. So if I creep up a little bit see how fast it is. Not too bad, it's actually keeping up a little bit better this meter. So I'll take it right down. Yeah this one seems to just keep up a little bit. But what I'm going to do, take it to about 13ish and then I'm going to hit range. So now I'm in manual range. So there you go, see it's a tad quicker. So sometimes if you've got a power supply that's playing up and it's dipping, the the load's dipping for some reason, on manual range you'll see it quicker sometimes. Okay. So let's just have a quick look with this. So we've got resistance on this one, which is the next position. So if I just turn the power supply off in a second, let it die down, disconnect it. We've got resistance, which works on a very similar principle to the other one. But in order to get continuity, on this one we don't have a, a switch position as such whereas on the flute meter it was about here you flick it across and then we're on to continuity again you press your mode until you get the audible icon as I call it this one up here you just about see it and then you see that so if I get our little resistor again it's about 13 ish and I'll put it on let's see if it picks up anything no so if i do that so it's picking up absolutely nothing and it's the reason being is we've got it on the continuity setting and that only goes up to 300 ohms if i change it back to normal onto auto along with resistance there you go so that's on auto and it's picking up 12 kilo ohms so again, watching that display, I can't, if I just tip it a little bit, you might be able to see it. Okay. Right. So, we're going to, the current settings on any meter, I'm going to go through on a different um, video, just to explain how to meter current drawn on panels in order to uh, work out the... Uh, the battery life okay so we're going to do that in a different video okay so to recap make sure the meters in the right position personally i tend to put it onto resistance and then just check the meter make sure it's working make sure the probes are working before we do anything take it away that's okay so we know we're okay work out what we're doing so we're metering say power supplies so we're on voltage and then we can just go ahead and, and meter that. And then if we're checking the resistance of a circuit, we put it on that. Meter your circuit as you would normally do. Bob bomb And then that gives you a reading. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, that, that will do now for now, uh, people. And let's hope you join me for the next video. And the next one we're going to do is going to be about current uh, amperage, etc. And if you get a chance, if you can like and share, uh, that's going to help. Thanks for watching. And any uh, comments and suggestions, uh, that's a bit of a dangerous thing to say in this day and, work, day and age. But any comments and suggestions, uh, please bomb the comments underneath. Thanks for watching.